So I want to talk about light. And in particular, I want to talk about the types of light that have become ubiquitous in our lives, but that for most of human history, we very rarely saw, which are under the broad umbrella of what we call luminescence. Because you can essentially sort light into two categories. There's, on the one hand, incandescence, which is light that comes from an object's temperature, right? When something is hot, it emits light, right? Specifically, if you take some object, uh, like this pin, and you get it up and just heat it and heat it and heat it until eventually it will become red hot and it will start to glow, right? And that's what we call incandescence because it's, you see it fades quite quickly because the pin cools off. And that's because the light is being emitted because of the object's temperature. And it used to be that that was essentially all the light that we saw because the light coming from the sun is incandescence because it comes from the sun's surface temperature. And also light from the moon is reflected off of the sun, so that's also fundamentally incandescence and also light from the stars is also because of their temperatures so that's also incandescence and the only time we would see any sort of luminescence was if we were looking at something that was phosphorescent which was rare but now most of the light that we see is luminescence and so there's a few different categories of luminescence right because every object that is incandescent emits sort of the same type of light which is just based on its temperature, and then the amount it emits is based on a few other things. And, right, even for most of the history of electric lighting, we had uh, still incandescent light, but the only incandescent light I could find these days actually is these uh, Halloween lights that I just got because they're on sale, but they also happen to be incandescent light bulbs. But now almost everything is LEDs, which are light-emitting diodes, and those are a form of luminescence, right? That's what this little lantern is, is this is a form of luminescent light. Specifically, it's electroluminescence. It's where electrical energy is converted directly into optical power, or electrical power is converted directly into optical power, or electrical energy is converted directly into optical energy. Power is just energy you know, per time. And so electroluminescence comes in many forms. The most common is semiconductor devices like LEDs. I'm not going to go into exactly how they work right now, but they convert electricity directly into light without the intermediary of heating something up. And there's LEDs or semiconductor uh, there's also this uh, electroluminescent wire that you can get that I uh, think is kind of fun. And it operates on a slightly different principle than LEDs. Uh, just makes for nice sort of uh, low power colored lights like this that are sort of distributed over a wide surface. And that's the thing that, that you can most frequently, like if you just search electroluminescent something, you'll find electroluminescent wire. But light emitting diodes, LEDs, are also a form of electroluminescence. So then in addition to that, you have what I've spent a large portion of my life studying, which is photoluminescence, which is something that maybe sounds uh, not immediately useful when you hear about it, but it is, which is where you take uh, one form of light. I'm going through my laser pointers here. I see this is electroluminescence to get red light, and I've got electroluminescence if it turns on to get green light. Well, not very bright green light. Uh, and then here's the, the really useful one, which is uh, to get blue blue light, because blue light can induce, ooh, there we go, can induce phosphorescence or can induce photoluminescence in other materials. Phospho pho phosphorescence is specifically photoluminescence based on phosphorus compounds. But all that is is that you can take light, right? Electroluminescence is turning electrical power into optical power, electricity into light. Uh, photoluminescence is turning light into light, which is like, okay, who cares? But it turns out that's extremely useful because you can turn one color of light into another color of light, which just a second while I grab my handy dandy tennis ball of science. So you can take something like this tennis ball 
and you can shine this blue laser on it and it will produce green light right and one of the reasons that is useful is that uh, the LEDs that are like lighting this room for example actually mostly produce blue light and then through the use of photoluminescence by putting that blue light into a material that photoluminescence you can turn that very harsh blue light into a nice sort of soft warm glow of sort of yellow orange light like we get from the sun from an incandescent source of light but with considerably better efficiency and so to show you some facets of this i have this little makeshift spectrometer here that i'm going to put on the camera and that's going to divide the colors of light up the same way that a prism would so i have sort of a where is it single bit cut out here you can see if i sort of show you this white light up here but i pass it through this prism first you can see you see all the colors of the rainbow Let's see if i move it up there we go you see the red the green and the blue coming out of this white light. And you can see the same thing uh, from a spectrum from the sun, which I took earlier. So let's put this thing on and uh, show you some of the colors from these different light sources. Okay, so now we're here inside the spectrometer and you can see, see it breaks light up into its colors, but it also kind of moves it. So you see, if I put the blue on my hand here, you can see it, but also, if I put my hand sort of over here, you can also see the blue dot and you can already see a bit of a rainbow coming out of it. And that's because this diode la blue diode laser isn't very good. So you do the same thing with the red, right? You can see it even when it's not in the center. If I put it off to the center here, that's actually when it splits the colors. Um, and so let me just show you that with the uh, lantern again. See, there's the blue, green, and red coming out. But then if I do it with the tennis ball again, and I put the tennis ball in the blue laser. You can see a very, a very spread spectrum there, right? Where there's that little, again, that little bit of violet blue, but then a very strong sort of blue green there in the middle. And if you want to see the incandescent source again, so use this little lighter here as a source of uh, heat base. You see that's more of a evenly spread red, green, and blue that sort of tends more towards the red end of things and so well what about uh, sort of this other little violet source here well let me show you one more which is this ultraviolet light that I'm always having trouble getting to uh, yeah there's this little black light that I have uh, so if you if I shine that over here you can sort of see that but if I shine it on just a piece of ordinary white paper uh, you can see that it produces a sort of blues and greens versus if I put it right here it just kind of produces the that vague bluish color and so then there's finally one more source of luminescence to talk about which is chemoluminescence which is you know things like glow sticks where you just go ahead and mix some chemical reactants together Let's see if i crack this one oh. and you get light directly from a chemical reaction without again without the intermediary of heat and so you can see this is producing some green light and some red light and a little bit of yellow and it just kind of looks like this yellowish green and it's doing that again, without the intermediary of heat, so that's chemoluminescence. All right, so there's a brief little overview of the three forms of luminescence, chemoluminescence, photoluminescence, my personal favorite, <laughs> the little flashlight back on there, and then electroluminescence. And it's the combination of uh, electroluminescence and then with photoluminescence that provides most of the electric lighting that we use today, even though it's incandescence, the other form of light that is what we spent most of uh, our history looking at essentially exclusively. So it's kind of a remarkable fact if you think about it, that we sort of 
gone all this time with nothing but incandescence, and now we see almost nothing but luminescence at night. And despite that, we've managed to produce light that actually decently closely resembles incandescent light by combining these sort of uh, two effects of electroluminescence and photoluminescence. So the tennis ball is not a very good uh, for producing warm uh, sort of light, but the phosphors inside of room lights are. So yeah, hopefully you found that uh, informative. Bye.